It is Chinese New Year in Taiwan. The temples fill with families praying for better times ahead. The year of the monkey just ended has been a troubled period for this Chinese community that increasingly sees itself as separate from China. The mainland renewed its threats of military attack. Their pro-independence president was shot. And in a crisis for this young democracy, his opponents accused him of staging the shooting to win re-election. It's been a time many would prefer to forget. But some fear things could get even worse in the new year of the rooster. If there's an accident or there's a miscalculation on the side of Beijing, then a disaster will take place. As long as Beijing leadership feels it is compelled to do so, it feels that it has no other way to, to avoid a conflict. It feels that uh, Taiwan independence is a certainty. The jury Taiwan independence is a certainty. I have no doubt that Beijing would resort to use of force. <laughs> This is the man who may determine if there's war or peace. Taiwan's president and commander-in-chief, Chen Shui-bian. He's China's public enemy number one. A Democrat who refuses to accept the communists' territorial claims. Taiwan is a democratic country. He's the classic underdog of Asian politics. A dissident who was jailed for his beliefs, with a wife who was paralysed in what some claim was a politically motivated attack. He's been surrounded by tight security since last year's assassination attempt. But foreign correspondent was given unprecedented access to the man behind the headlines. Today, it's a trip on Air Force One to the village where his story began. Chen Shui-bian was born into a poor family of tenant farmers in the southern county of Tainan. My childhood was in this kind of family. I was born in a long time, and I was born in a long time. My father had no fixed work. 家里也没有田可种，而且妈妈又是文盲。不好意思哦，小心哦。坐坐地。His mother still lives in the same simple farmer's cottage where he's come to pay tribute to his ancestors. Unlike the nationalists who fled here after the communist revolution, Chen's family, like most of his neighbours, had lived here for centuries. Today, the entire village has turned out to see him, more than 25,000 jostling for a glimpse of their local hero. He's brought more than 20,000 red envelopes, a traditional good luck gift for Chinese New Year. Some people have camped for days to be first in line. 
觉得他很平易近人，而且觉得是全民的总统啊，我们大家要多多支持他。喜欢啦、啊？为什么？哎，亲和力，亲和力本土化。Taiwan remains a quintessentially Chinese culture, but politically it bears little resemblance to the communist-ruled mainland. Since Taiwan embraced democracy a decade ago, there has been a sea change in attitudes towards national identity. Today, only one in ten people call themselves Chinese. Nearly half say they're first and foremost Taiwanese. Feng Shuinye and Shu Yingko are students at Taipei's Chengxi University. I think we don't have really a direct connection with mainland China. We have no idea who is the minister there. I don't. I have no idea. I have never been to mainland China. So, so it's like a foreign country. Yes, yeah, very far away. To many, Taiwan has been effectively independent ever since the communists seized the mainland. President and Madame Chiang Kai-shek flew to Taiwan in 1949. But the Chinese dictator Chiang Kai-shek treated Taiwan as a staging post to rebuild his army in the hope of reconquering the mainland. Soon after he reached Taiwan, the people demanded he resume duties as chief of state, and he did so. This was the turning point in the Republic of China's struggle against the Communists. Calling it the Republic of China, he imposed strict martial law under his political party, the KMT. The KMT ruthlessly suppressed calls for democracy and Taiwanese independence. By the 1980s, an opposition group called the Democratic Progressive Party was openly demanding both. An idealistic young lawyer, Chen Shui-bian, was one of its earliest activists. I在担任司宴的期间，我们就一起办了党外杂志，要追求百分之百的言论自由。但是没有想到，最后我还是被罗织诚意，最后被这一个抓起来。Chen spent eight months in this prison, but resumed campaigning immediately after his release, taking advantage of the KMT's gradual easing of one-party rule. In 1994, he became mayor of Taipei. In 2000, to the KMT's horror, he was elected president. But by now, fear of invasion had forced Chen's DPP to tone down its pro-independence rhetoric. But in 2000, when I was in his opponents simply don't believe him. Su Qi was the KMT's chairman of the Mainland Affairs Council, the chief policy body on relations with China. Well, he's, you know, he turned left and right, uh, you know, at different times. So he has said uh, he won't do it 15 times. He has said he would do it 20 times, something like that. So. Nobody knows where he really stands. The Chinese military has stepped up its rhetoric since Chen came to power, making clear it will attack if it feels Taiwan is moving toward a formal declaration of independence. Three years ago, I was taken on a rare media visit to a Chinese military base outside Beijing. The two were not only showed off the military's hardware, a senior commander made clear the willingness to use it. 
大家都知道，中国啊，台湾是中国不可分割的领土。嗯，中国啊，包括台湾人民的意志是一致的。嗯，我们部队担负着保卫祖国、维护祖国统一、保卫祖国领土完整的神圣的使命。Across the strait in Taiwan, the government is also happy to show off its military strength, even if it's hopelessly outgunned. The United States remains its primary guarantor against attack. But even America's staunchest Pacific ally, Australia, has made clear it would not feel obliged to help the US defend Taiwan. During a visit to Beijing last year, the Foreign Minister Alexander Downer said the core defence treaty with the US did not apply to Taiwan. Some other um, military activity elsewhere in the world, well, be it in Iraq or um, anywhere else for that matter, doesn't automatically invoke the ANZUS Treaty. It's important to remember that. that Taiwan saw his comments as Australia kowtowing to the communists. Thank you very much. Taiwan变成中华人民共和国像香港一样的特别行政区，那我相信整个中国的势力往东延伸。Taiwan and China are already fighting a diplomatic battle for the East. We joined President Chen on a journey to Taiwan's dwindling band of Pacific allies. His plane escorted by Taiwanese fighter jets until it left Chinese airspace. The main destination was one of the world's least courted countries, the Solomon Islands. The Solomons is one of only 25 countries that still have formal diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Every other country has chosen to recognize mainland China. <laughs> President Chen's visit, with two planes carrying more than 100 officials and Taiwanese journalists, was the biggest diplomatic entourage the country had ever seen. The Taiwanese president doesn't often get to travel. Since the big powers switched recognition to mainland China in the 1970s, Taiwan has become a diplomatic outcast, its leaders unable to even set foot in most countries. Today, just a sprinkling of small, weak nations recognize Taiwan in return for aid. And while President Chen is fighting to hold on to Taiwan's few allies, China is fighting just as hard to take them away. Taiwan has already lost the fight for the Solomon's nearest neighbour, Vanuatu. Late last year, it switched recognition to Taiwan, only to switch back to mainland China amid rumoured deals of giant cash payments. For now, long-term aid projects like this rice-growing scheme are keeping the Solomon's ties intact. But it's getting ever harder for Taiwan to compete with China in checkbook diplomacy. For all the bonhomie of this visit, the Solomon's Prime Minister, Sir Alan Kemakeza, admitted his country was also being courted by mainland China. They approached me and my ministers, my officials, at the international conferences, the bilateral uh, discussion. But there could be a time when, when the Solomons could switch recognition. Um, maybe. Uh, I cannot predict the future. Another day, another country. President Chen is nothing if not a fighter. 
his bid to thwart China included a state visit to a country even smaller than the village he was born in, Palau. This nation of less than 20,000 people had never seen anything quite like it. The full Taiwanese delegation attended the inauguration of Palauan President Tommy Remengesau, an event for which other world leaders could only send their regrets. First, from the United States, Laura and I regret being unable to attend. My thoughts will be with you on that historical day. Sincerely, George W. Bush, President of the United States. To cement relations with this tiny ally, Chen even donned a wetsuit to show off its potential for Taiwanese tourism. Unperturbed by the fact that he can't actually swim. Armed with a kickboard and surrounded by nervous security guards, he took his first ever plunge. It's hard to tell what, if anything, these outings achieve for Taiwan's international standing. Why Back home in Taiwan, many see Chen's foreign visits as an embarrassing sign of how desperate their nation has become. Many China is so big, we are so small. Yeah, they got big boys. Big boys, we only have very slow boys. So that's the problem in the national, international. Well, very few countries recognise Taiwan. Um, when you see President Chen going off to some very small Pacific island... We even we have no idea where they are. <laughs> Chen's attempts to stride the world stage have been further undermined by the KMT, which has tried to deny him any credibility as Taiwan's leader. We simply believe that the presidency is illegitimate and the gulf, unfortunately, is very deep. Taiwan population is still deeply divided, roughly into half-half. One half believe he's a crook, the other half believe he's a president. The division comes from the most controversial incident since he came to power, a mysterious shooting on the day before last year's elections. President Chen was trailing badly in the polls when his motorcade was apparently fired on. He was rushed to hospital for emergency treatment, his office later releasing graphic photos of his wounds. The next day, an outraged public swung their support behind him, re-electing him with a razor-thin majority of just 29,000 votes. The KMT claimed they'd been robbed. I think he lied and he staged the, uh, the shooting incident. He had to cover up his lie one after another and it was just like Watergate. We simulated the shooting and based on all the evidence he provided, things just don't match. The whole thing was most likely faked. 
，个人真的受到枪击，而污蔑我是助导自演。The KMT refused to accept defeat and took over the streets demanding new elections. The Taiwanese nation was split down the middle. This made me even more worried about a PRC attack because we have no unified national will to defend ourselves. Because if any attack occurs, one half of the population will blame the other. You guys caused the trouble. And why should I defend it? Because you guys caused the trouble. So, do the, the so this, is, this is very dangerous. This is, this is why I'm, I, I find it very deplorable. The president should have done something about this. But there's one thing both sides of the Taiwan Strait have in common. Business. While the politicians have been arguing, Taiwanese entrepreneurs have invested billions of dollars in China's booming economy. Maybe one day China will realize that peace is the only solution. And uh, maybe we can be friends. Business. We're in business. Yeah, like, uh, business but not politics. Yeah, they, Definitely. they have to get money, not politics. Uh, money is more important. For all the military bluster, there's strong hope common sense will prevail on both sides. China has much to lose from any military attack, and as much as Taiwanese tend to see themselves as a sovereign country, few want to risk invasion for the sake of formally declaring independence. So we don't have to worry about it. This is a small group of people. It will not be a big deal. We have confidence. It's a comfortable, if sometimes uneasy, status quo. And as Chinese around the world begin the year of the rooster, it won't just be Taiwanese praying that it stays that way.